Welcome to the Global Investor Podcast, a show that focuses on helping foreign investors enter the lucrative U.S. real estate market. Host Charles Carrillo combines decades of real estate investing experience with a professional background in international banking to interview experts in all areas of U.S. real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Charles Carrillo. Welcome to another episode of the Global Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Carrillo. Today, we have Eric Tran and Melissa Krishtik. Eric is managing partner of Universal Commercial Capital, a private lender with 25 years of experience in real estate and private lending. He is a member of the American Association of Private Lenders, loves working with U.S. and international investors, brokers, and realtors. Uh, Melissa has a master's in political science and a journalist by, by profession. She works with Eric as a sales executive at uh, Universal Commercial Capital. So thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks, Charles. Hello, everyone. My pleasure to be on this podcast today. Hi, Charles. Nice to see you again. Nice seeing you. I mean, we had you guys on a few months back and um, we went through some of the different loan programs for uh, foreign investors. And I want to, we're going to dig into a couple of different parts of your business and the different programs you have a little bit more in depth. And um, can we start off with getting a little bit more background on yourselves prior to working with Universal Commercial Capital? Sure. Um, our company started out as a um, regular lender. Uh, we provide loan to people in the U.S. Regular loan, people buy home, put out some down payment. About 10 years ago, we start receiving a lot of inquiries from people overseas. They say, I want to buy um, property in the U.S. It looks cheap compared to where I am. Uh, do you know or do you know how we can get financing for our investment? And that's when we start getting into like this loan program for foreign national. The truth is, um, it's not very common in the U.S. Uh, for loans for foreign national just because to the U.S. banking institution, it is still a small market segment. So all the big guys, they didn't really pay attention just because it's too small. But like for us, you know, uh, with our um, ethnic background, we are from overseas too. So we realize there is a huge demand for such space. That's, uh, that's why we started our uh, loan program for foreign nationals. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And what was your what was your experience prior, Melissa? Prior, we call oh. it like Nila loan, regular loan for regular people, regular American in here. Okay. Just like you want to buy a house, you put out three, five, ten percent, yeah. you get a mortgage. Yeah, like that, that was, like mm -hmm. the majority of lenders out there. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Bread and butter. Melissa, what's your what's your background prior to starting with UCC? Well, before I started working for UCC, I was working as a journalist and I was out the market exploring my opportunities. Then I just got into real estate business and it really got me interested. So uh, I met UCC team and uh, I find them like a great team because we all work like one and we all work like a family. And that's what is bought me to just continue growing in real estate business. So far, I am so satisfied to work with uh, this open-minded and positive people like UCC team is. Awesome. Okay, great. So a lot of, uh, well, some of the investors or some of the listeners probably don't understand exactly what a private lender is compared to, I think most people know what a traditional bank lender is. You would, you know, walk in, you're doing application. It takes, like you were doing Eric previously, 30, 45 days, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of red tape, a lot of uh, boxes to uh, check. How is a private lender different? Actually, we are more or less the same as a regular bank, except uh, how we raise our capital is different. A regular bank, they can raise money from anyone, from the public. But for us, we are not allowed to raise our capital base from the public. We can only raise uh, our capital base from what we call accredited investor. That means people have experience investing uh, in stock, in bond, in real estate. So in a sense, to protect the, the, the zero public, we only allow to work with like very experienced investor mm -hmm. institution. That's the only difference. 
Besides that, we are more or less operate, look at things the same as a regular bank. Okay. And how are your, are your guidelines pretty similar to a traditional bank when going into looking at a, a potential loan application? Uh, actually, we are easier because mm-hmm. unlike the bank, which is regulated by the Federal Reserve, we are regulated by the SEC, mm-hmm. Security Exchange Commission. So, so we are easier because we are under less regulation, less rules, uh, just because the government does not have to protect that much, the general public. Right. You know, accredited investors, they know what they're doing. So, so yeah. we are so for investors or for our listeners, what happens is that um, when we're talking a lot about syndicating real estate and we're talking about raising money and uh, SEC guidelines, that's coming in on the equity side of it. What uh, Mr. Tran's talking about is coming in on the debt side of it. So these are accredited investors. So they're wealthy individuals. Um, there's different guidelines the SEC sets for them. And this is where you can invest with a company like UCC to get involved in the private lending on the debt portion of it, other than how we always usually talk on the show, where we're raising money from investors to come in on the equity side. So right. actually owning the property. So it's a little, it's, a, it's on the other side, it's a little different. So right. that's very interesting. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit more. What I want sure. to see is, what, is your, what are the different loan programs that you guys offer traditionally? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, yes, of course. Well, uh, as people can see on our website, uh, we're offering hard money loan, commercial loan, construction loan, and fix and flip loan. It depends of your, uh, I don't know, project that you have or loan scenario that you have. Uh, We are very open for new uh, partners, new ideas. So that is what we're offering to people that those kinds of of loans that we can offer. Are they uh, mainly short-term loans? Like I imagine the hard money and the flip loans, those are all short-term. Do you also do longer-term loans? Uh, yes, we do. Um, actually, for the broadcast today, we are more or less talk about international investors. Mm-hmm. And for international investors, um, they normally come in on the, on the longer-term loan than mm-hmm. fix and flip because they're not here. So it's really hard for them to like run the whole process of fix it, fix and flip it. We have like 30 years loan program for international investors, the same as the the regular American in this country. The only difference is uh, rate is a little bit higher just because our requirement to approve the loan is much less than the the regular American. But the term 30 years, 15 years, 20 years is the same. Okay. They can have a long-term loan if they want. Okay. And what is the minimum loan amount you guys usually work with? Is there a, do you guys put a floor on that? Um, well, mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Milita. <laughs> well, we usually work from uh, 100K up uh, loan programs, but we're very flexible when it comes to loan. So it depends on loan scenario, but we, we usually do that kind of loans. Okay. And, and this- one thing I want to mention about a loan amount. A lot of like our clients from Europe, they are attracted to the U.S. market just because the, the, the property price is much cheaper than U.S. They can find a lot of like $80,000 property under $100,000 property. So sometimes the loan amount for each property is small, mm-hmm. but like we can do blanket loans. Like some wow. investor from Europe come in and say, Eric, I want to buy 10 property at the same time. Put one blanket loan for all 10 for me. So, so, so that's, that's normally how we work with like a uh, client from Europe. And on this podcast today, I believe Milita want to talk more, emphasize more to our uh, client from Europe. And for like all the region, we will have another podcast. Yeah, perfect. What, um, for the different property types, what are the main property types you see or you can work with with foreign investors? Yeah, Milita, you can answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like you to explain this a little bit more. Uh, for the property types, so are you, is it um, for, for foreign investors, are they able to do, I know obviously residential, but are they able to do commercial properties? Are they able to do commer- like larger multifamily properties, retail mm-hmm. office? Is there a limit on it? Or do you guys specifically focus on one part of it? One asset class, I would say. Let me answer, Milita. Yeah. 
Okay, um, a lot of our um, clients from Europe, they, they go into life for single family resident. That's what we call SFR. But I have quite a few clients, they're gonna go into like multifamily, small retail, um, office space. So, so we do all kind of access class. We're not limited ourselves to only single family. Okay. Uh, quite a few of them uh, buy like multifamily, not big one. Seven unit, 10 unit, 15 unit. Uh, I see those type property a lot. What are the typical requirements for obtaining a loan as a foreign investor? Whether they're here and they don't have an SSN, social security number, or whether they are actually based out of the country? Okay, uh, for foreign national, mainly it's equity based, but there are certain things we always ask uh, our client. First, how do they want to acquire the property as an individual, as an LLC, or as a corporation? Mm -hmm. First thing. Secondly, uh, even though they reside in a foreign country, you know, they, we always tell them to apply, go online and apply for the IT number. Mm. They don't need it now, but they will need it in the future for tax purpose. When they apply for the loan, there's no tax. So I don't need the IT number, but they should have it handy, ready from the beginning. So when they sell it, you know, they have to provide that number because there might be some tax liability when they sell the property. Beside that, not much else we require. You know, sometimes, sometimes if they say, uh, I want to buy this house as my primary residence, I'm going to live in there. Then we might ask for some documentation about their income, about their credit history in their native country. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. And what are your typical loan terms? Well, we can do like 30 years. Okay. But yeah. The regular loan, like I said before, like a, a regular American people. Okay. So mm -hmm. a fully amortizing 30 year loan. Fully and said, okay. And 35% loan, uh, sorry, 35% down payment. Is that normal? Is that normal, Milita? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Normal and minimum. Normal and minimum. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. So it, it can raise from there depending on the specific borrower's uh, situation. Yeah, right. Okay. But awesome. like, but like for apartment loan, you know, it might sound strange, but for apartment loan, bigger loan amount, bigger property, we can go with twenty percent now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Just because, just because the loan program is different from the single family loan program. Yeah. But like to be on the side, let's say thirty-five percent minimum. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Obvious. Okay. Perfect. The um, I was about the I ten as well for listeners is that um, that's something that you should work with a CPA or an attorney in the states that knows about that because they can fast track you getting that I ten number when you're setting it up with your if you're setting up a, an EIN number like an LLC or if you're buying it through an entity that's different from your name. So that's something as well that um, I imagine Eric and Melita can point you in that direction if you needed that. Um, you guys work with a number of different real estate investors, U.S. and foreign. And um, what kind of issues do you normally see uh, investors make that you deal with? I always like to ask to see from lenders' perspective, from attorneys, from anybody that's not the investor, where they see investors making mistakes. Mm -hmm. You want me to answer this question, Milita? Yes, of course. Okay. See, this is the common, not problem, but the common reason why we declined the loan. Like I say, a lot of investors from overseas, especially Europe, they are attracted to the U.S. market because of the cheap price. But sometimes they go for too cheap a price. That means they go to a very remote area, you know, a semi or rural area where the population cow is, where what we consider is a small town, 20,000 and under population cow. And if the town is too small, we don't loan in such city or towns. We just turned down a five unit loan from a client in Norway, just because the town is so small. There is no comparable property like our client's property in the area. You know, we can put a value on the property. So, so a very common mistake. Okay, you know what I heard there is 
uh, $10,000 property in Chicago. <laughs> they don't know it's in the west side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, that's one thing. Uh, and um, the second thing is, and that's when they need us the most, since they're from overseas. They don't have that uh, deep expertise on the valuation of the property. Sometimes they overpay for the property, which is, we, we, we don't say nothing about that, but we only loan on real market value. If you overpay for the property, you have to bring in the different yourself. Mm-hmm. That those are the common mistake problem that I, I can see from our foreign investor. Yeah. Mainly not, valuation, mainly yeah. valuation and area location. Yeah. Valuation, not knowing the market. Okay. Yeah, those are, I could see that. And especially it's much more difficult for someone that's not local or especially mm-hmm. foreign. Um, right. It would be a lot more difficult for them to find and actually f- have a, act- uh, a um, what well, you would say, a, uh, an actual, a, a good estimate of what the price should be for the mm-hmm. property. And, right. um, so, That's why they need to um, just inform themselves a little bit better or just to contact us. We are here to help to see if the property is good, if the neighborhood is good. We just can recommend something and just uh, we have to deny small loans and just, you know, it's, it's the risk that, that we have to take. Yeah. yeah. And I want to add one thing, Charles. You know what? A lot of foreign clients, they don't come to us. They don't look at us as a lender but they come and look at us more, more as a, a insurance policy for them. Because besides their down payment, their money, their 35%, 65% is our own money on the table. So we will make sure the value is there. Yeah. We will make sure the, the legality of the property is there to protect ourselves first. And if we protect ourselves, we, that means we protect our client. So, yeah. so I have a client from Finland he buy one time 50 property. He can pay cash. He still come to us and want to borrow again those properties. So we can do all the you know, quality control on his yeah. investment for him. Yeah. yeah, it's another set of eyes for doing underwriting. So yeah, it's, right. uh, it's exactly. definitely, that's definitely one benefit of uh, when you're taking on a loan when buying property is right. that it has to go through a whole separate appraisal, has to go through a whole, you know, many different parties. Um, go through the bank and then goes through another appraisal as well. So there's other factors, other people looking at it. It's just not you and getting a property and have a broker tell you it's a good deal. And it's, yeah. and it's not really a good deal. Yeah. Um, I was looking at your website and you guys have a new section. It's called opportunities. What, what is that? Explain a little bit more about those properties. Are those properties that you've taken back that you're selling now or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let me answer uh, on this question. On our website, opportunities, uh, remember, I talk about accredited investor. Oh, okay. Lots of like qualified investor in the country. They have excess cash, excess capital. They want to deploy it. And they, are, they always look out for the opportunity. So they contact us. They say, hey, Eric, you know, you have any investment opportunities that I can come in, I can invest, go invest, or I can buy the loan from you. So, so that is the base, the base for like, our accredited both American and offshore investors to come in and review our portfolio so they can make a decision on how to deploy their capital. Okay. Like, you, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you, you don't co-mingle it then. They come in and they will make a, an investment and they'll have themselves will have the, the note on one property. It's not spread out like a fund or anything? No, you know, okay. we, we are not a fund. Yeah. You know, each investor come in on their own. Okay. You know, we are not set up like they put a money in the fund, then we deploy uh, the money to this, to that. They make their own decision on right. where and how to invest. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best way. It was just um, when I was looking at it it, 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 it's nice because they can see exactly what property it is. And then if they want to loan, they can loan on it. So I wasn't right. sure. And I saw some of them close. So that's cool. That's neat that you're able to do that. So how can people um, learn more about UCC? Universal Commercial Capital, and um, if they're interested in actually being a uh, working with you to make money in the sense of uh, becoming a lender with you, loaning money on the properties, or if they want to actually get a loan on a property that they want to buy themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, besides uh, our website, 
uh, they can find us on a bigger pockets platform also. Mm -hmm. So they can find us there. They can just send us a message. They can send us uh, their loan scenario. And uh, we're really fast in answering. Also, uh, we have our podcast where we are answering um, all those questions. And uh, we have our uh, team advising people how to invest their money. So they can find us on our email addresses, our phone numbers. We're really, really open. Uh, I would like to add that that is the difference between us and banks. We are very open for communication, you know, because uh, banks are really strict. And I like to say that we have a soul in real estate business because people can openly come to us and expect that they will be uh, treated well that they will get all informations, nothing will be hidden from them because we're not afraid to say, oh, you're making a mistake here, we can't help you or let's do this on a better way because we think that this is the better way for you to, to just save money or earn more money or something like that. Uh, we're very open for questions, suggestions. So as I said, you can find us on our email, on our website or you can find us on bigger pocket platform. Okay, perfect. And for clients, for investors from Europe, please remember, Milita is based in Europe. She lives in Europe. So, <laughs> so we can always meet. <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of Europe because Europe has a potential uh -huh. and people have ambition to invest, but they don't know how. That's why we want to say that UCC is the right place for you to contact us and to see all about the terms, mm -hmm. uh, everything that you need. It's not so complicated uh, because maybe it looks like it is, but it's not. It's very simple and uh, people are interested, just they don't know where they, t they can ask questions or to whom to, to talk to. Okay. Well, great. I'll put all the links into the podcast and YouTube notes. And I want to thank you guys for being on the show and uh, look forward to speaking to you in the new future. Thank you, Charles. And you have a nice day. Thank yeah, you. you too. Uh, thank you, Charles. And thank you all. Yeah. Bye. Hi guys. It's Charles from the global investors podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're interested in getting involved with real estate, but you don't know where to begin, set up a free 30 minute strategy call with me at schedulecharles.com. That's schedulecharles.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Global Investor Podcast. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to get new weekly episodes. For more resources and to receive our newsletter, please visit globalinvestorpodcast.com. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Harborside Partners Incorporated exclusively.